Howdy friends, I'm going to talk about a tool called TeacherMade, and this is a pretty simple tool to use if you have a Word document or a PDF file, PowerPoint, Google Slides, you can download those items, turn them into PDF files, upload them into this, and then make them interactive. This is a completely free tool. I'm not going to go all encompassing as to what all this will do. It's going to be kind of a flyby, but here are the items I am going to talk about. I'm going to talk about adding a file, adding interactions into it, assigning it in Google Classroom, what it looks like for a student, and then what the grading process looks like. So that way you can learn how to build the assignment and get it out and see what the entire process is. All right, so here we go. I'm going to start with getting some content first. So I will hit the print option. I know that there's a print option there on Wonderopolis, but I want to use this one because then that shows you how to get a PDF version on any website. So when you go to print one and you hit save as PDF, then it will give you that option. You'll notice though, this website is kind of funny with the printing because it says of 67 pages. So I'm going to change this to one through three. So that way I, those are all the pages I get. So let's go ahead and save that. And I'm going to save it just in my downloads folder because that's where I want to pull the information. The next thing I will do is anything that I want to add into this, maybe it's not directly on this page, like for example, the Wonder Word challenge. In this case, this is something that wouldn't show up in that print off. I'm going to take a screenshot of it. So I hold down Control Shift and hit the window button. It's the button above the six. And I will click and drag around the items that I want. And that'll take the screenshot because you can actually add your own images into the PDF file experience. Quit that. And I will put this off to the side because I will use it later. So now let's get into teachermade.com. I already signed up and I signed up with Google, but I'm going to log in and log in with Google. Once you're in here, then you can create a worksheet here. Give it a title. And if you want to give more description, you can. This is probably the most confusing part of the whole process. And that is what do you do in this spot? People want to click on the blue button thinking that that's how they upload something. No. But if you actually read it, it does say you have to click there in order to choose something. So I click there and I'm going to choose my PDF file. Once it's done uploading, you'll see that you can pick and choose which pages you want to include. So if there's excess pages or there's a page that you don't want, you don't have to include it. But I'm going to include all of them because I do want this extra space, actually. All right, so when you get into here, this is the editing tool. And you can scroll in this space here, so that way you can see your entire article that you added or whatever sheet that you added. You can add whatever elements you want. These are the tools right here that students would interact with. So these items here are items that students would interact with. And then these items over here are your tools. So you can add your own text and you can add your own image and they can't mess with those. And you can also block things out. So if there's something you don't want in there, you can actually block that information out. If I wanted to put in some interactives, if I want them to do some short answers, drop downs, or open answers, matching, true and false, multiple choice, or check boxes, then what I can do is add those items wherever I want in this space. For time's sake, I'm going to skip down to the bottom because I'm going to show you that I can add in my own image and I'm going to put in an interactive. Once I choose the image icon, I have to draw the box where I want the image. I have to go find my image. Since I took a screenshot, it'll be in my downloads folder. Select my image, and now it's in. So now I'm able to take this little graphic and make it a part of the assignment. This was a matching activity, so I will show you that I can use the matching tool. And you draw boxes around the items that you want to be matching. So I click on that. Click on the matching tool again and choose where it matches up. To match those together, I have to hold down the shift button and click back on the first one. And that lets it know which one matches with which. I'll keep going.
All right, so I have this matching activity all set up and ready to go. The next thing I will do is I am going to add in some text. And I just want to ask a question myself here. And you can put whatever type of question you want in here. And I will hit edit text after I put the box in. Every tool is kind of that way. You put in the item and then you'll have the option to edit it. You can make the box look however you want. Right now, the fill color is white. I could make it another color if I wanted to by using this color scale. You can change the font style and font color on all that too. Save changes, and there's my box, and I can edit it and change the size of it however I want. All right, that is in and ready to go. Now I need a space for them to respond because this is my box, not theirs. So again, these tools over here from here to here are theirs so i will use a open answer paragraph text there and start right here and draw and you can always adjust the size of it after if you're having trouble getting it in there don't worry about scrolling all the way to the bottom until after you get it drawn because then you can drag it down Whenever you need to later, you can always adjust the size. It's almost easier to work within that space. Keep in mind also you need to scroll within this frame here and not over here because otherwise it won't scroll very well. Okay, so now they have a paragraph text box and the article is up here. And again, they will be able to write actually on this and draw on this however they want if you want them to take specific notes. But I just added a few interactives to give you an idea of how to get rolling here. Once I'm done, I go to File and Close, and now I'm ready for the third step, and that is to create an assignment. I'm not going to use their name or ID because it'll be included on their Google account. You can decide when they receive their scores and how they should be displayed. That's up to you. And there are also some toolbars. You can decide if you want them to have drawing tools or text tools. I'm going to leave those on. And now I'm ready to assign it to Google Classroom. If you're using another type of tool, you could always copy this to a clipboard and put it in another learning management system. All you have to do is select your class. If you're a Google Classroom user, it will automatically switch it to an assignment. Put some additional instructions if you want. Change the point total to what you want, set a due date, always really important in Google Classroom, and also use topics so that way it's nice and organized for your students. You can multi-post this across several classes. You can also choose specific students. Fine. So now we're to the next step, and that is to look at it from a student perspective. So here's a student account. I will go to classwork, and here is an assignment. I see I made a little mistake on the assignment when I created it as a teacher. I should have changed the name of that. It shouldn't say new assignment on teacher made. That's not very good. So anyway, keep that in the back of your mind as you create assignments. The student will click on the assignment, begin, see that they have some extra tools here. They have a box they can draw and they have a circle they can use. They have a line tool, they have a highlighter tool, and they have a regular drawing tool. So there's all kinds of different tools on here and they are sensitive to a touch screen, so they work pretty well. But this highlighter tool is pretty smooth to use and they can adjust the color of it if you want them to. Just a few items as they read through it. For this interactive portion of it, you'll see that then this turns into a marker and they're able to just drag and drop to the ones that match. For this part, you'll see I can't write in here, but I can add my own text. And so there are a lot of tools on here. It could really be used in a lot of different ways. It could be even used for math since you have that nice little drawing tool and you have a nice little text tool that the students could add their own text at any time. When the student is finished and they get to the bottom, you'll see that there is a save for later and I'm done button. Uh, if the student wants to come back into it, they can hit the save for later. And then when they go back into the assignment, they will be able to work on it some more. So the next time I click on this and begin with Google, 
it's going to have all my changes that I had in there still there. So no problems there. When I'm finished as a student, I'd hit I'm done. It takes a moment for that to load up. Something else that you may want to have the students actually do is after they've submitted here, you may want them to go into Google Classroom and indicate that they have finished here as well and hit mark as done. So that way you are notified and you know that they are finished. So now I, as the teacher, can see that this one is turned in. If I click here, it's going to take me to the article and act like I'm a student. I don't want to do that. What you do is you actually just go to teacher made. And when you go to teacher made to grade this and you log in, then you'll see your worksheets. And so here's the article itself. When I click on it, I can see how many are complete. When I click on the article, then I can see the student responses. If I click here, I can see the student work. So there's their response. It gave them full points there. And then I'm able to grade this one. So it did the auto score. So this type of thing, it does an auto score. Did five of five. So I'll go ahead and give the rest of the points to this student. You can also add additional comments directly in here. And when you are done, then you can return to the student close. Then you would go to the next student. If you have a student that needs to redo something, you can hit the actions button and reopen and reset. So that way they can redo their submission and it would start with a blank slate. All scores are done and you are finished. If you want it in a spreadsheet format, you can download a CSV file and it'll pull it up in a spreadsheet format. So that way you can see all of their work. So again, that's teachermade.com. This is a free tool, and I hope that you found this to be super helpful.